Welcome to Trelawney Benefice, here in the heart of Cornwall. I'm Richard Allen, the Rector. Our Sea Sunday service today will take us to important seafaring locations in our county. We'll meet some special people whose lives and ministry is centred around the sea. This year, it's the 200th anniversary of the formation of the RNLI. So we'll celebrate the wonderful sacrificial work they do for us. Of course, too, we'll be reflecting on the provision that God makes for us in the harvest of the sea. Welcome to the Church of England's weekly online service. God created all things in heaven and earth. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Loving God, we've come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness through Christ our Lord. Amen. salvation 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, hear and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome to the Shipwreck Museum here in Charlestown. I thought I'd read to you the story of Paul's shipwreck from Acts 27. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and were driven along. As we passed to the lee of a small island called Cuda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure, so the men hoisted it aboard. Then they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together because they were afraid they would run aground on the sandbanks of Cirthus. They lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard, then with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. After they'd gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost, only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. Well, hi everyone. I'm on the Plymouth Lifeboat at the moment with David Priest. David is the coxswain here, but it's really lovely for me because I used to teach David some 38 years ago. How about that? And I've watched his career develop and the things he's done. So David, tell us, um, what did you do first of all when you left school? Okay, so I left school uh, a little bit earlier than normal uh, and I was fishing out of Grimsby. I uh, was uh, fishing for whelks and uh, crabs out of Grimsby um, and then come back to Exmouth when I was uh, 17, fished for the local fishing boat there uh, and joined the lifeboat. And how did you actually get on to the lifeboat then? Uh, so one of the guys I was fishing with, uh, Jeff Ingram, um, he got me involved with the lifeboat. He asked if I'd like to join. Um, I was 17, you could join at 17 then. Um, and uh, I, I signed up on my 17th birthday. And off you went. Yeah, I've been a uh, helm at uh, Exmouth ever, ever since, uh, and a volunteer crew member, progressing to a mechanic on board the boat as a, um, a relief mechanic from the local coxswain, so as a volunteer. Uh, volunteered for 25 or 26 years, and then went on to become employed by the Iron Line. And tell us, David, you're a coxswain now on, on these boats. How did you get into that? Then? Well, so plenty of uh, training. Um, very lucky we got some our own, our own training, our own college, so did plenty of training and worked up through the ranks. Uh, took a job um, at Humber, uh, as the, the, the station coxswain at Humber. I was there for, for 12 months and then the role that I'm in now, which is a resilience coxswain, um, coxswain of float mechanic is my title, 
um, where I'll go to different stations to provide cover for leave or sickness. So, um, yeah, I, I just go around to all the stations now where they need me. What a fantastic job. It's great. And tell us, David, how do you feel when, when you go out on a shout? Because you never say no with the lifeboat, do you? You always go. Well, really tricky question. Um, so every, every call we do is different. Uh, even the ones that you think of the, the bread and butter or the same thing every day, every time is different. Um, some of the times you, you know the outcome before you get there and sometimes it's not a great one. So every call has a different feeling. Um, some really, really worthwhile, really great shouts. Some that are, are, are nasty, malicious false calls. Mm -hmm. They're well, not so good. Um, but just knowing that you're going to support or help somebody is, is, is what you do it for. Absolutely, yeah, which is absolutely fantastic. And we're just so grateful for people like you because this sea out here isn't, isn't particularly easy some days. People get into trouble on it and we can never predict the sea, can we? So to have people who are prepared to go at all costs is absolutely wonderful. So David, it's been a real privilege to have a natter with you here on, on this, on this boat. And it's just so lovely for me as a teacher, you know, when you see one of your pupils progress and do something like this and put something back into society and into life is, is a real privilege and, and really lovely. So thank you so no, much. Thank you, it was lovely. When I got the phone call, I recognized your voice straight away. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it's lovely to see you and uh, thank you very much for coming down. To David, to Plymouth. Th thank you, it is, it's really lovely. I, I'm, I'm just so grateful. This has been a lovely little time together. Thank you very much. You. Cheers. I'm going to be reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 8, verses 22 to 25, a familiar reading to many where Jesus calms the storm. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake, so the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? He said to his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. This is the Foy River estuary. Behind me is one of my villages, Polruan, a place of great seafaring tradition. Thankfully, boat building repair and repairs still go on here. In the Second World War, just up the water from here in Mixto, a part of the US 1st and 29th Divisions were based as they constructed landing craft for the D-Day landings on the famous Omaha Beach. Tiny, as he was known, was a young American, six feet four inches, 20-year-old conscript from Iowa, who'd grown up on his parents' farm. He used to leave the camp and walk in the land a short distance to a local farm where he met a young Cornish farmer of similar age. He wanted to do the honourable thing too and sign up, but he couldn't as he was needed to farm in the war effort. These two young men became mates. Tiny would come to the farm and milk and drink the fresh milk straight from the cow as you did in those days. On a visit, not long before the American task force left by night, Tiny said, there's two things in life I'd like to do. I'd like to go hunting again with my pa, and I'd like to sit again in my mother's kitchen and share one of her dinners. He gave his friend a letter and asked if he could post it home to the States. Two weeks after they'd left, which the Cornishman did. Our Cornish farmer found out a few years later, Tiny didn't even get off the beach. 
Church. If you've seen the film Saving Private Ryan, the awful beach scenes at the start are meant to have taken place on Omaha Beach. Our Cornish farmer recounted, it could have been me, but I've lived to a ripe old age, married, had a family, seen and enjoyed my grandchildren. He kept all his life a scoop that Tiny had carved for him to feed his cattle with, so that in his memory and his sacrifice lived on. Well, for me, it's like a parable of Jesus who laid down his life for you and for me on the cross, dying so that we could be forgiven and we could have life but we all know how much we need Jesus. So what I want you to do, first of all, is that, uh, there we go. Have a look at that, flick your fingers. Have a look, flick your fingers. Are you flicking your fingers? Clap your hands. Here we go now. Stop your knees. Okay, brilliant, stop. Now, um, I wonder whether you boys can make the C, okay? So, okay, nice and loud, come on. I want you to make the rain, just hold on, two on two, like this. Flick your fingers, and... Uh, I'm going to tell you, like Jesus in the boat, quiet, be still, okay? And uh, because that's what happens in the story. Now, remember, Jesus and the disciples were on the sit on the lake Galilee. There was a great squall broke out. So let's get the squall going with a sea breeze. Okay, uh, two on two, like this. Flip fingers. Go. And that's what Jesus did. He calmed the storm, which was on the on the lake, and the storm was quiet and stilled. All the disciples thought they would lose their lives, and he told them they didn't have any faith. But of course, Jesus was showing them his power. We've read of the storm that Jesus calmed, and seen in a fun way how it was calm. Life isn't always easy. That's why I always say that Jesus is my kind, wise, constant friend. Not only did he give his life for us, he wants to help us navigate this one too. Sometimes the storms in our lives appear without warning. Jesus was in the boat with his disciples sleeping when without warning a furious storm came up on the lake. So the waves swept over the boat. Presumably the disciples were used to storms on the Sea of Galilee. It was renowned for sudden flash storms. However, this one must have been particularly serious as one of the disciples woke Jesus and said, don't you care if we're about to drown? During the storms of life, it's natural to panic. Certainly I tend to and fear can creep in. There's a very simple acrostic of fear, false expectations appearing real. Sometimes our response to the storms should be trust. Jesus said, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Jesus is quite capable of calming the storm, and that's exactly what he did. So we need to try to trust God and fear not. It is said that there are 365 fear nots in the Bible, perhaps one for each day. It says in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you.
Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Well, welcome aboard the Falmouth lifeboat here on this beautiful day in Cornwall. I'd like to introduce you to Carl, one of the coxswains down here. Carl, how long have you been working for the RNLI? Um, I've been a volunteer for 32 years and I've been working for the institution um, for 22 years. 20, and what's your actual role? Not um, only are you a coxswain, but you train and encourage yeah, people. Um, my role is known as a coastal trainer and uh, the job entails training anything from a new recruit uh, to a seasoned cotton or help uh, to make sure we're at the top of their game. Wonderful. And it was lovely yesterday I met David and you put some input into David, didn't you? You trained David up? Uh, I may have done. <laughs> <laughs> There's been that many over the years. <laughs> well, that's uh, well. he's certainly doing a lovely job and it was lovely to hear his, his story and his tale yesterday. So you're a Christian, which is really fantastic. How do you feel about being a Christian on these lifeboats? I feel that um, giving your life to Christ is, is so, so important. To know that um, our Lord is, is our Father um, and He protects us and looks after us. And it, He doesn't keep us away from the storms. He, he's with us through the storms. And the times we've been out, which have been in sort of, I say, challenging conditions, <laughs> he's, he's there with us. And, uh, and I think part of being a Christian and being part of the, um, a charity institution like this is, is there to help others. Um, and at times, it's, it's pass on my beliefs to, to some of the, my fellow crew or, or casualties. Carl, that's wonderful. And, and that's what it's really all about. Um, living out our faith in the world, in whichever situation that we're in. And lovely to know that when you go to sea, you feel that you've got somebody else with you as well. Absolutely. Lovely. Well, thank you again for inviting us aboard and looking after us so well. It's, it's always right. a joy to meet you and always a joy to come on these boats. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. Yes. And thank you for the lovely work you do. <laughs> Merciful Father, all things in heaven and earth are held within your loving care. Look with favour upon the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. Protect and bless the crews of all our lifeboats, our lifeguards and all who risk their own safety to bring help to others. Guide all who work for the institution as volunteers, supporters or staff, that they may be faithful to the vision of its founders so that it may always be seen as a beacon of hope and light to those who find themselves in peril on the seas. Through the same Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory now and forever. Amen. The Fisherman's Mission Prayer. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, hear our prayer for those who go down to the sea in ships. Especially do remember our fishermen who daily bring in the harvest of the sea. Be with them as they toil the deep, in storm or calm. May your love surround them and protect them. Be with their families and friends as they wait for their men to return. May they too know your presence with them in the home and your grace sufficient for every need. Give wisdom to those of the Royal National Mission to Deep Sea Fishermen, the Fisherman's Mission whose care is to minister to the needs of fishermen and their families. By helpful hands, kindly voices and loving service, may your love be known among fishing communities and to your name be all glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is Gadrivi Lighthouse. Heavenly Father, grant thy blessing in a very special manner to the men and women and children in the great lighthouse family scattered up and down the coasts 
and islands, in the great lakes and rivers, and various seas and oceans in our greater world. Amen. A prayer for the Royal Marines. O eternal Lord God, who through many generations has united and inspired the members of our corps, grant thy blessing, we beseech thee, on Royal Marines serving all round the globe. Bestow thy crown of righteousness upon all our efforts and endeavours, and may our laurels be those of gallantry, honour, loyalty and courage. We ask these things in the name of him whose courage never failed, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the rich variety of seafood we can eat, especially fish, crab, lobster, to name but a few. May we be ever grateful for the rich diversity of your creation. May we be good stewards of all that you've entrusted to us and not take an unfair share from the sea. May we be grateful to those who fish to enhance our diets and all those support industries like this beautiful fishmongers here in Loo. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Collect for Sea Sunday. Almighty God, on this Sea Sunday, we pray for all who go down to the sea in ships, that you will protect them as they sail. Keep them safe from all the dangers of the sea and give them courage when they face storms. May they know your blessing on the families that they leave behind. We ask this in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, welcome to the Fish Key here in Newlyn Harbour on this beautiful Cornish afternoon. I've got two very special people with me who work on the harbour and have got a very special ministry here. So tell us first of all, what do you do on, on the harbour here? I'm Kate MacArthur. I work for the Fisherman's Mission. We are the only charity out there that solely supports fishermen and their families it with pastoral and welfare needs. So when we're out in the harbour, it's generally just having chats with fishermen, seeing what the issues are and if they need any support from us and just basically seeing how their day is. Lovely, that's a really, really valid ministry and so important because it's really difficult today on these boats and away from your family and your friends. So the support that you give is so valid and so, so important. So what is your role and tell us who you are as well. Yeah, I'm Dareth Durkin. I'm an ordained priest in the Church of England, uh, allegedly retired. I use that word um, loosely retired often. Um, I minister in the whole of the area, but my role at the Fisherman's Mission is that of a trustee. I've been a trustee now for about four years or so, and I'm one of the faith trustees. There are two of those, one in Scotland and one here in, uh, in England or the rest of the UK. And uh, my my main role within that mission is to be a faith lead to make sure that we are still continuing on Christian principles and we are a Christian organisation. We were founded over 100 years ago, 140 odd years ago, and um, our uh, founder member was an ordained priest himself and he started the mission by going out on boats so meeting the fishermen out on, on the seas as opposed to on the quays. Nowadays we are solely on the quays. Okay, so what are the biggest challenges to some of our fishermen here? What challenges do they really face today? 
No fish in the sea. The weather this year has been horrendous for fishermen. They've not been able to get out as much to actually do any fishing. We've yeah. noticed that a lot. So in terms of fishing, they are two of the biggest issues that they face at the moment. Um, and just battling that, but they work through it. It's not a job, it's a lifestyle for them. Totally understand and we're so grateful for what these men and women do for us and the harvest that they provide for us. So tell us, what are some of the challenges which the mission faces as a whole today? Is it surviving? We're in a reasonably good position as a charity. We're a medium-sized charity as, as charities go. But yes, one of the challenges has to be uh, that funding is not easy at this particular time with the cost of living crisis and everything else. People are short of money and we're not receiving the funding in terms of general fundraising that we would, we would have enjoyed, say, five or six years ago in the pre-COVID days. So that's one of our biggest challenges as an organisation. Totally understand that. So a wonderful organisation. They do a fantastic job for us. We need to get behind and encourage these good people, grassroots, because men and women suffer today for fishing and we need to give them all the help that we can. So it's been a real privilege to come down on the quay at the heart of Newlyn and be able to talk to you on this lovely afternoon. So thank you for all you're doing in the Lord's work. God bless you all. And no one will ever move me from this land until the Lord calls me to sit at his hand. For this is my Eden, and I'm not alone. For this is my Cornwall, and this is my home. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine down upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, May God hold you in the palm of his hand. And may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, sail on the corner seas, never do us any harm. Oh, sail on the corner seas, never do us any harm. Oh, sail on the corner seas, never do us any harm. And we'll all roll on behind. Oh, we'll climb up the rigging, never do us any harm. Oh, we'll climb up the rigging, never do us any harm. Oh, we'll climb up the rigging, never do us any harm.
and we'll roll on behind. Oh, a pasty and a rum wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a pasty and a rum wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, a pasty and a rum wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all roll on behind. Oh, it's fish and chips and tea, it'll do us any harm. Oh, it's fish and chips and tea, it'll do us any harm. Oh, it's fish and chips and tea, it'll do us any harm. And we'll all roll on behind. Oh, Cornwall is my home, it would do us any harm. Oh, Cornwall is my home, it would do us any harm. Oh, Cornwall is my home, it would do us any harm. And we'll all roll on behind. And we'll roll the old chariots along. And we we'll roll the old chariots along. And we we'll roll the old chariots along. And we we'll all roll on behind. Well, I'm down here on the beach in Tallinn with some of my friends from Polpero Primary Academy. I hope you've enjoyed their music, their chord melody, and we're thoroughly enjoying this sunny afternoon on the beach. It's great fun, isn't it, girls? Are you having a good time? Yeah! Oh, Keep on enjoying. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our service from Cornwall for Sea Sunday, and as we've celebrated the harvest of the sea. We hope you have a really lovely week and we hope you've enjoyed being with us. God bless you all.